1950, the Disney company was in trouble. Their last animated feature-length hit had been Snow White, released 13 years prior. They were flailing and heavily in debt. They needed something to drag them out of the gutter. And that something was Cinderella. Such a hit that they weren't so much dragged as they were propelled. Good job too. With a $3 million investment, if it had failed, the studio would have gone bankrupt. Thankfully, the success of Cinderella allowed them to keep making movies through the 1950s and beyond. So, what made the film such a success? Well, the original poster declares the movie a love story with music. To be honest, I think a more fitting tagline would have been a romantic B-plot with mice. Seriously, the animals dominate this thing. Like Snow White before it, Cinderella's focus is not so much on the title character so much as it is on the supporting characters. Unfortunately, where the dwarves were funny, characterful and enjoyable to watch, the mice are... not. They're clearly aimed at very young children, and anyone above the age of about eight will probably find them nothing more than irritating. I remember disliking them even as a kid. Gus Gus in particular. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm not very good at killing pests, I always feel too guilty afterwards. But I would take a mousetrap to this little fucker's face in a nanosecond. That's how we meet him, in fact. He's in a trap. Oh, if only he'd stayed there. But anyway, this isn't about the mice, which is good for my blood pressure because I fucking hate those things. Okay, okay. Moving on to Cinderella herself, how does she shape up? Well, she's okay. She's clearly playful and friendly, patient and caring, loving and loved. She's someone who doesn't judge, who doesn't like to see the bad in people. But that doesn't mean she can always see the good in people. Lucifer has his good points too. For one thing, he... Hmm. There must be something good about him. And even though she is patient, she can be pushed to her limits. Coming, coming. Well, sort of. Her impatience never really exceeds mild annoyance, which she only ever expresses to herself. Except for one time. When she's trying to go to the ball, she channels her frustration with her stepmother and turns it into pure grit. Well, why not? After all, I'm still a member of the family. And it says, by royal command. Every eligible maiden is to attend. She really stands up for herself there, and I have a lot of respect for that. However, the trait she is most admired for is... Can you guess? Her beauty. Now, I'm not saying she isn't beautiful. Just look at her, she's stunning. Except there. That's actually kind of creepy. But because she is pretty, most of the time, she cannot possibly have any negative character traits. Not one. She is perfect. Too perfect! The levels to which we're supposed to believe Cinderella would put up with this shit with a beautiful smile on her face are staggering. The only people who find anything wrong with her are the villains, which raises somewhat of an irony. The villains are the only characters who see her as a rounded person. And you know when I said she was loved? Well, it's more of a friggin' obsession. She cannot put a single foot wrong, and despite her being the underdog of the story, she has a fucking army of birds and mice at her beck and call. They wake her up in the morning, they mend her clothes, they wash her. And when she gets locked in her room, guess who saves her? That's right, the mice. So much for the loneliness of servitude, I think she has more friends than I do. She's so damn perfect, she can harmonise with her own reflection. Surprised she didn't cash in on that little skill. She could afford to get all the birds and mice in the world to help her out. So this is love. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to describe what a bullshit romance this is. I've seen more believable relationships on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. I watched this film with a friend and she came up with a really good analogy for Cinderella's romance. It's less love and more pulling in a club. Bear with me while I try to explain. Think of your typical night out. You turn up full of expectation, ready to have a good night. You see someone across the dance floor you think is hot, you approach them, barely say a word, and dance together for a bit. Following a brief and usually awkward intimate encounter, you leave them with some way to get in contact with you and then bugger off home. See? Fits, doesn't it? With that in mind, how many serious relationships do you know of that started out as a drunken encounter with a stranger in a club? I'm guessing the answer is somewhere around zero. 
let's refer back to that poster for a second. A love story with music. Honestly, I think that's false advertising. I mean, yeah, there's a love story in there, if you can call it love, but the couple don't even meet until 50 minutes into the film and they don't share a line of dialogue until about five minutes later. After that, they aren't together until their wedding. I'm sorry, that's hardly a story. That's a C-plot at best, and a boring one at that. Even though the movie kicks off with Cinderella singing a song about dreams and wishes, there's really not much discussion of that idea throughout the rest. As I said, the majority of it is focused on the supporting characters, so there's not much room to explore what Cinderella actually wants. With that said, the song alone encompasses all the flaws that come with the dreams come true philosophy. Ideas of faith, belief and wishing really really hard are fine, but don't really mean anything when they're not coupled with determination, courage and hard work. But she doesn't sing about a single one of those. It's all faith, belief and wishing really, really hard. That said, although she doesn't express these virtues verbally, she clearly demonstrates them throughout the film. She's shown working hard even in the face of her foes, and she never fully gives up. So I really can't judge her too harshly on this one. What she preaches may be utter bullshit, but what she practices is nothing short of admirable. So, how does she fare in comparison to Snow White? Well, for me, it's a case of one step forward, two steps back. She's certainly a more entertaining character than Snow White, when she's not being regarded as perfect. Unfortunately, she is regarded as perfect most of the time. Sadly, what Disney chose to draw from Snow White was a pretty face with a very underdeveloped character, a romance with less romance in it than a Hallmarks card, and a story devoted more to the quirky side characters than the lead. What they improved, however, was a princess's limits. Snow White very much seemed unbreakable. Like if she was an elastic band, you could just keep pulling and pulling and pulling, and when you let go, it would always go right back into place, barely even losing its shape. With Cinderella, there was definitely a feeling that if you pulled hard enough, the band would snap. She's shown on more than one occasion to be impatient, annoyed, even slightly selfish. Just not enough. Though you can believe the character could lose her cool, you never feel it could happen at any point during the film. You just know that when something bad happens to her, she'll be back to smiling mere moments later. As for the love story, this was a huge step backwards. Even though Snow White's romance was completely forced and unbelievable, they at least made a connection early on in the film. This gives the princess time to reflect and yearn, so when they finally meet up again at the end of the film, the rational part of your brain takes a nap so you can just enjoy it. With Cinderella, they meet so late in the film and have such a weak connection, you end up not really caring if they get together or not. I'm not saying you don't want Cinderella to have her happily ever after, of course you do, but more than anything, you just want to be out of that hell she's living. Who cares if she gets a man or not? To be honest, I don't really know how I feel about Cinderella herself. As with Snow White, I found myself liking her more than I thought I would, and she was a stronger character than I remembered. But that doesn't mean she was a good character. She still has all the flaws that people criticise the early princesses for. In some cases, they're even worse than Snow White's, and... I know I keep bringing this up, but I can't let it go. That poster. A love story with music? I'm sorry, it's just not. In the next video, I will be looking at some Disney non-princesses. Alice from Alice in Wonderland, Wendy and Tinkerbell from Peter Pan, and Lady from Lady and the Tramp. See you then.